Relationships, relationships, relationships. What can I say about relationships? I don't really function like a regular human being. The reason that relationships and dating is so tricky is I am super sensitive to the chemicals that my brain makes. Um, specifically, 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 specifically. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Steven, EUPD guy, and here we talk about all things mental health. Um, and yeah, it's been a while. It's been so long in this horrid year that we call 2020 that it looks like I've gone back in time and I'm now part of a pop punk tribute band from the early 2000s. So, I look like this because, well, the hair is just like a lockdown hair cut that really grew out and now I don't want to cut it. However, the horrible face pubes is for um, a Beyond the Depths thing, which is something that's kept me incredibly busy over the past few months, which has been amazing. So that's why, one of the reasons why I've not been so regular on this channel, because that's taken up a lot of my creative time. But I did promise that if I got to 350 subscribers, I would upload a video and here we are at 350 subscribers and here comes a video and I asked you guys what you wanted to hear about. <sighs> I was really hoping you were going to pick Crazy Ex Girlfriend. I mean, I'll do that video, like maybe this year, but yeah, no, you didn't. Y you picked dating, which is a choice. You have come here to ask a 35 year old single gay man with mental health issues about dating. So some assemblance of structure, not that I really do structure, I think I'm going to talk about first of all why dating is tricky for me as somebody with borderline personality disorder. I'm going to talk about some of the situations I found myself in in previous relationships before I realized that I had borderline personality disorder which is the real danger zone as far as I'm concerned and in kind of like what life is like after. Um, spoiler, not much better. Anyway, so for me, the reason that relationships and dating is so tricky is I am super sensitive to the chemicals that my brain makes. The one that gives me the most grief is oxytocin. So for those of you that don't know necessarily what that means, it is the attachment um, chemical and mothers will produce it once they've had a baby. You produce it when um, you meet somebody new in a romantic situation. You can um, produce it with friends, you can produce it whenever you make physical contact with somebody. So for me, this chemical is incredibly... I don't know if it's that I don't produce enough of it, so when I do produce it, I just can't function like a regular human being. I don't really function like a regular human being, but I really, really struggle with functioning like a regular human being when this chemical is at play. And the other danger is, when I do produce this chemical, <laughs> in a weird way, it kind of becomes addictive and infectious to the other person um, in certain situations as well. More sort of in-depth talking about what's going on there will be, hopefully I'll get this card right, um, in my video about trauma bonding and authentic bonding. So that's why now I'm aware of all this stuff because it took me until I was like 33 to really understand this. Um, I have to be super, super, super careful. But the worrying thing is, the reality is, is that I spent a good 12, 13 years in romantic situations, longer than that, 15 years in romantic situations and had no awareness that this was going on. 
I just thought this was normal human experiences or that I was just broken and there was something wrong with me that I didn't understand. So either way, not great. So looking back at some past relationships, which it's interesting that people chose dating to be the topic of this video because um, they've been toxic, abusive, um, codependent, and um, yeah, just not fun really. But as I said, a lot of what my previous relationships have been, I have covered in um, authentic bonding versus trauma bonding. But just to like quickly recap, when you bond through trauma response, you're not bonding authentically because, and this is incredibly risky for people with borderline personality disorder, because you will throw away everything you care about and everything you feel you are and all the things that are important to you just to keep somebody in your life. And you have a core belief that being with somebody who is bad for you or being in a relationship that is toxic is better than being alone. Which, coming out of the other side of that thinking, I can absolutely assure you this is not the case. You need to work through your trauma bonding, figure out how and why that is there, and then make sure moving forward that you do authentic bonding and that you never compromise who you are, what's important to you, and what you love doing in favour for somebody else. Because that's not healthy and it's not sustainable. The thing I've found in the past, because of my um, issues with oxytocin, when I first meet somebody, I will present what I think they want me to be. And I'm really, really good at doing that. I'm super good at listening to what you say and what you feel you want in a partner or the little hints that you drop and I will transform myself into that whilst concealing who I feel I really am. Not a good foundation for a relationship at all. For example, a physical example I can pull up. I have this whole issue around presence which my friends find hilarious. I could actually almost do a whole video just about present anxiety. I don't like receiving gifts. I certainly don't like receiving gifts if that person has physically given me that gift and they're looking at me for a response. Because it's also very in the moment, I don't have time to assess what the gift is, how to um, process what has been given to me. I know this sounds really, really stupid that somebody is um, giving you an expression of love um, or appreciation so you should just accept that but um, it, it, it's, it really really gets me anxious because I don't necessarily know the right responses and then some people really zone in on how I'm responding and say like, oh you hate it oh I can take it back oh you're so ungrateful and I think this comes from Sorry parents, you're going under the bus for this one. I think this is a response to growing up quite poor. However, my parents would pull out all the stops with Christmas presents. Now, that, right, what's wrong with that? Parents that shower you with gifts one time a year and then you struggle for the rest of the year. Well, that's the thing. My parents didn't have the money to shower us with the gifts, so things went on store credit and credit cards. So come February, when a child breaks a toy, or just has a general strop, my parents would use this um, example of what debt they're in, and how much money they spend, and how ungrateful I am. So that stuck with me, that there's no such thing as a selfless gift or a gift given freely without expectation. I know in my logical brain that this is not true and that people do give gifts freely and that people do give gifts without um, expectations. But because I was so young and being made to feel, I don't know, like 
I was the bad guy in the situation and that I'd manipulated them for hundreds of pounds worth of toys that I never appreciated. Um, that's just stuck with me. And because of that, I have this present anxiety that <laughs> makes me really anxious around presents. So I get into a very panic mode. I don't know how to respond. And then as I say, certain people zone in on how I'm responding and then that makes the situation so much worse. There was a point to this. On the flip side of this, I am an awesome present buyer because I listen to what people say. I study what things that they're, they're into. Um, I will then go and look for stuff that is relative to what they have said and I'll remember stuff from six months ago. So when I do give presents, which isn't very often because I don't want them in return, I normally get it quite right. And that's an example of how I used to constantly study people to give them what they wanted, not just presents, but with me myself, um, rather than be who I was or who I feel I am or who I want to be or blah, 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 whatever. Now I have to get back to the point that I was trying to make with the presence and I've completely gone off track. Borderline personality thinking. Not being alone and having somebody to love you was more important than my own self-worth and looking after myself and keeping myself safe. So that's what my relationships were pre-understanding how my brain works. If you can call what I'm doing now understanding how my brain works. So since coming to terms with my um, diagnosis, how's the love life been? Dry. Very dry. So reasons for that are I am absolutely terrified of getting myself into that mind trap again of trying to deliver something that isn't authentically me. And it's easy, right? No, no, it's not easy because I've got like 15 odd years behind me of always trying to be somebody else to impress people. So to, you know, it, 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 it's one thing to say, I recognize I do that, but it's a completely different thing to stop that kind of behavior and just do what feels completely unnatural and completely what you shouldn't do, and that is be yourself. So since my last relationship, it's been two years, and I would say that I have been solidly single in those two years. There has been dalliances. There's been a couple of guys, and, um, it's really, 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 really hard. So, <laughs> um, this one, I got um, a bit of an oxytocin hit. And it was like after the first time we met, which um, if you want to read between the lines on that one, was just a casual thing. Um, but I found myself straight away afterwards saying, hey, do you want to get a drink or something? Now, this should have been the red flag. The person said, um, no, just moved to the area, so I'm not really, like, doing that. But, you know, we can continue to be casual. And I was like, oh, cool. So, and literally, that response was enough for me to go, cool, boundary put up, that's fair, let's not chase this. So I didn't message that person back or anything. <sighs> And then they came back to me about two days later saying, actually, let's do that drink. Now, I should have assessed. It wasn't a case of somebody being like, oh, actually, yeah, no, it was a good time, blah, blah, blah. Let, let, let's actually see what's going on here. It was me thinking I saw a boundary. So I stepped away. And then that person not liking the fact that I stepped away, that I didn't give a chase. Um, so therefore, put the thing out there to say, chase me, chase me. And yeah, 
so this was a couple of weeks of being left on red for me. Um, whenever I was in their company, it was fine. It wasn't great, but it was fine. Um, but it was all the other stuff, so the messaging. Sometimes it was like really thick and fast, and then other times it could go nearly 24 hours of being left on red. Which, again, not a big deal, but when you're having the oxytocin hits and how you respond to people emotionally, this stuff really, really, like, can drive you crackers. And I was getting back to that mindset of not caring about my job or, you know, prioritizing seeing this person rather than doing stuff that I was supposed to do or moving my life around to try and accommodate them. And these were all clear red flags but because that brain chemical was in play, I completely forgot everything I've learned over the past two years. Luckily, um, as I like previously said, the guy just moved to the area. Um, and it's a small town, Cheltenham. Um, and he happened to be seeing a friend of mine. And this friend was like, yeah, no, like, we're together. We're in a relationship. And... Um, it's not open. Um, okay, not a relationship, but as far as he was concerned, they were seeing each other and they weren't seeing other people. So, hi, me, the other guy, which is really just like, that's really just should be my dating status. I am the other guy. I, I am the foster boyfriend. I am the one that um, takes you in and teaches you what a relationship should not be and then you are set free to go and have healthy wonderful relationships um, and I will continue to just foster the next one until they're set free to have healthy wonderful relationships. This situation with this guy I should have seen with the red flags and I should have seen with the being left on red and the um, sort of the the picking up pushing away pulling that this is somebody who has their own issues and certainly, certainly does not need to be in a relationship with somebody with borderline personality disorder and me, as somebody with borderline personality disorder, does not want to be in a relationship with them. There's a, there was another guy that followed not long after that one and what happened there was because I'd already experienced that rush of oxytocin, I was desperate to put that attachment feeling onto anybody um, and then this other guy we've just really really struggled to um, be able to find time because the world is insane and in the UK areas are being locked down um, in different degrees to other areas um, because COVID-19 is still a real big issue over here um, and yeah, we've just really struggled to lock in a time and stuff. And I don't know, I kind of get the vibe that he's quite happy just having a text relationship, um, which actually maybe could be quite healthy for me to begin with. Um, but obviously with the oxytocin feeling, there's an importance on being able to physically interact with this person. Again, read between these lines. So I think the whole point of this explaining stuff that's happened recently is kind of to say that I find myself constantly second guessing and constantly examining how I'm responding and how I'm feeling. And I find myself going from trying to be chill, trying to be cool, trying to be chill, trying to be cool, to outright just seeing red, not like angry, but just like, you know, naught to 10 with overwhelming emotions and, you know, somebody that three weeks ago, I didn't even know existed, um, can cause me to actually have to shut down for a day to cope with all the extreme feelings that I've been feeling. But when do you say to somebody you've just met, oh, by the way, I have mental health conditions, um, to which most people are like, yeah, so do I. Like, mine's very tied up in romantic situations and relationships and, um, I, I'll be dragging you into this and 
yeah. And everyone's always, always the same. Like, oh, it's fine. We'll work through it. We can figure it out. Blah, blah, blah. And they, we, we never figure it out. Which is totally fine. Because it's not on them to figure out. But I guess, at what point am I forward and open and honest about the fact that a lot of my triggers, I would say, are tied up in what we're doing. If you're looking to me for an answer for that, I don't have it. Um, so feel free to comment and stuff, because that would be great. Um, cool. So that was the dating video. I don't think it was helpful. And I think I just rambled into a camera for a good few minutes. Um, but, you know, I always get such an overwhelming response from you guys. So I figured at least I should do the thing you asked me to do, even though I don't feel I have any qualifications or any part in um, actually being educated on talking about this stuff. But here you go. I will try my best to make sure that I keep up with this channel because it is important for me. It's not just about um, how lovely you guys are, and I'm incredibly grateful for that. Um, but this is kind of a room and space for me to vent and people offer ideas and stuff. And that gives me stuff to think about as well, which is all great. And often after I've done one of these videos, I'm quite reflective and yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Even if I do feel I've just spoken garbage for 20 minutes. Um, until next time. Bye guys. <laughs>